Kira, is it true that you quit your job? What? Oh, yes, it's true. I quit my job. Oh, what are you doing? The company my husband works at went bankrupt, so we were planning on having you and Adam give us money from now on. Huh? Is this some sort of harassment? Oh, it is, right? Is that why you quit your job? No, it's not. I didn't know your Mr. Dawson's company went bankrupt until now. I quit my job at the company because the side job I had started gaining momentum, so I decided to just quit it. What? A side job? Does that mean you're just going to work for some extra cash? You're going to rely on Adam's salary and use the money from his side job for yourself, right? No, that's not it. It's been two years since the salary I earned from my side job greatly surpassed the one from my job at the company. It was getting difficult to do both, so I decided to choose one and focus on that. I talked with Adam about this. Oh, well, why didn't you tell me about it? Well... You didn't tell us because you're hiding something, right? Which means that this side job of yours doesn't pay as well as you say it does. If I had known about it, I never would have let you quit your job at the company. This is why Adam said it's best if I didn't tell you guys. You don't listen to a word I say and just immediately start attacking me. What? Have you heard the term toxic parent? Oh, what are you on to? This is the perfect timing, so I'll tell you. Adam and I are going to be moving. You're moving? I have no intention of explaining when you can't even understand why I quit my other job. I'll just say that this was Adam's idea. Hold on! It's you and Adam's job to support us! Why don't you two ask your other son for help, the one you gave all your attention to? What? But Damien is too sensitive of a person to get a job. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Don't you realize that pampering him like that is probably why he's 41, unemployed, and living with his parents? What? Goodbye. <laughs> I finally found your new address, Kara. It wasn't easy. I had to give my relatives a bunch of money to make them talk. <laughs> huh? Mrs. Dawson? Oh, it looks like you didn't block me. I didn't block you on purpose because I didn't know just what you people would do if I completely shut you out. Well, it looks like someone's still as rude as ever. Anyways, it seems like you still don't have a job. What? I've been watching you these last few days. But you only leave the house when you go shopping or jogging. You've been... watching me? Just what are you thinking? I know that you're not in the house right now, so I had my stuff moved into the house. What? What do you mean your stuff? How did you even get in? Well, I broke that big window that leads from the yard to the living room. You what? Anyway, me moving into your house isn't important. I'm just surprised you still don't have a job. Isn't it normal for wives these days to have one? And to think I came all this way just so you and Adam could finally do your job and support me. Why is it that you haven't done anything to prepare for my arrival? Because we were never planning on letting you move into our house. What did you just say to me? I told you this before. Did you forget? You didn't tell me anything. Okay, I'll be there soon. Adam, you're still outside, right? What's wrong, Kara? I dropped off the stuff and on my way home. I'm at a gas station right now. Oh, I'm just glad you didn't bump into her. What is it? Your mother found out where we live and broke in through the living room window. What? She broke the window? Looks like she still as crazy as ever. Judging by the text she sent earlier, she still hasn't given up on getting us to support her. She says she's moved into our house, so she's probably not just going to leave. Jesus. What are we gonna do? We probably have to go home. 
but it's going to be quite the hassle once we do, since your mom's already broken in. This is the worst possible timing. Oh, I see. Now, huh? What is it? I tried thinking about it from a different perspective. Ever since she found out I worked at A Industries, Mom hasn't stopped telling me to give her money. Yup. She ignored me at first when I told her about the company I got into after I graduated high school. But she found out that it was one of the largest companies in the industry after I got interviewed by a local newspaper. Which is why she now thinks I get paid well. So that's why. I was truly shocked when I found out that she wanted you to give her basically your whole salary every month. Truly. At the time, it was only seven years since I'd graduated high school and got the job at A Industries. My parents probably thought that I got paid as much as someone who graduated from a prestigious university and got an official position. It looked like aliens the way they kept asking me for money. <laughs> I assume nothing's changed in their attitude, so she's probably going to ask me for money again. But now that it's only two weeks until I start my new job, I'm basically unemployed right now. <laughs> oh, I understand. You mean that we should take advantage of the situation, right? Let's decide on what to do before we go home. Where are you right now? I'm at the supermarket I always go to. Okay, I'll pick you up by car, so wait for me by the entrance of the main road. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Got it. Kara? I heard what you and Adam were talking about last night. To think that you were actually against me moving in and have no intention of supporting me. But aren't you the one who's living off of Adam's salary? You're just afraid that if I move in, you won't be able to spend as much money on luxuries anymore, aren't you? Of course that's it. The fact that you still don't have a job is proof. If you have no intention of getting a job and supporting your mother-in-law, then get out. Starting from today, this house is me and Adam's. I decided that I'm going to depend on Adam from now on, which means that there's no room for parasites like you anymore. I understand. I'll leave tonight. My, my, you're so obedient. <laughs> it just means that I have no intention of supporting you, and neither do I want to live with you. I'm going to be packing my things, so goodbye. Acting all tough, are we? Did you get there yet, Kara? Yup, I just arrived. I ate the dinner I bought from the convenience store while surrounded by cardboard boxes. <laughs> that sounds fun, I guess. <laughs> I've got work that's nearing the deadline, so I'll need to set up the computer, though. I see. You seem as busy as usual, but don't overwork yourself, alright? Mom's calling me. I settle things in three to four days, but I won't text you too much just in case. Got it. I'll wait for you here. Good luck. Thanks. Kara, get back here immediately. What? Now that it's come to this, I don't mind if it's just you. Get a part-time job or something just to earn the money to support me. Huh? You kicked me out of the house after insulting me, and now this? It's not my fault. I didn't know at the time. Adam hasn't left the house in the past three days despite it being a weekday. I asked him what's wrong when he told me he wanted to quit his well-paying job at the company. He told me this morning. I kicked him out and told him not to come back until he finds a job. He's probably looking for one right now, but someone as useless as him probably won't be able to find a job so easily. You will be the one who will support me until he comes back. Get back as soon as possible. Um, have you ever thought about getting a job yourself? Huh? I heard this from somebody else, but it seems you got divorced with your husband. It all started when your eldest son Damien left the house. Because Adam and I have left, you two had no one left to rely on. 
So you force Damien, who's been unemployed for over 20 years now, to get a job at a local bread factory. But once the three months of probation was over, he was assigned to some place far away. Damien apparently realized that working at a bread factory was his calling, so he went. No one's been able to contact him since. I had no idea something like this would happen. Mr. Dawson was the one who gave Damien the pamphlet for the job, right? You blamed him for Damien leaving, which was the start of a huge fight. In the end, you were kicked out of the house. You realized that at this rate, you would become homeless. So you used the money you got after the divorce as a bribe to get one of our relatives to give you our address. Am I right? Yes, but still, what is it with you two? How is it that both of you are unemployed? Well, I for one plan to work hard from now on. Yes, keep doing so. So you're finally going to do what I say. Then go get a job so you can support me. No, that's not what I meant. Huh? You know, the two of us were actually preparing to move before you barge into our house. What, you're moving again? Didn't you notice that all our stuff has already been moved out? Oh, now that you mention it, it is a bit empty here. Oh my god, is your stuff really not here? You really did notice until I told you? You really do only think about yourself, do you? Well, I guess it's alright. At least I have a house now. Oh, we're only renting that house. Huh? We've already terminated the contract, so get out of here by the end of this month, okay? What? But... Adam's arrived at the new house, so bye now. Kara! But then who's going to support me? <laughs> Damien was the one who told me about his parents' divorce. Me and Adam's successful escape from his toxic parents apparently had a huge impact on him. He took advantage of being made to work at a bread factory and asked himself to be assigned someplace far away. Nowadays, he seems busy with work, saying that there's so much to remember. But he does seem like he's having fun. Mr. Dawson also apparently found a job, albeit a low-paying one. Miss Dawson, on the other hand, realizing that she was now all alone after failing to move into her house, she headed to the nearest job center. She was temporarily relieved after finding a job that came with accommodation, but apparently was so relieved that she was late for her first day. She didn't even apologize and keeps making similar mistakes every day. It's probably only a matter of time until she's fired. Hi, Cassie. It's been a while. Are you actually planning to come to the class reunion? Is this Tara? It's good to hear from you. Yeah, I'm planning to come. Oh, really? You're coming? Is there some problem with that? Well, yeah, kinda. What? I'm uncomfortable with having someone as poor as you sitting at the same table as us. Excuse me? As poor as me? Um, yeah. <laughs> you work in a factory, don't you? What does that have to do with being poor or coming to the class reunion? I know people have different definitions of wealth, but I'm not as poor as you think I am. But you do work in a factory, right? Yeah, but so what? What's the factory's name? Bridgewell Fabrication. Yep, I knew it. Knew what? My husband is the CEO of one of your company's clients. Oh, isn't that great? Oh, small world, huh? I think I remember hearing about that, actually. Does your husband work at Wagner Industries? Yes, that's the one. So you get it now, right? Get what? Are you really going to make me be this explicit? I guess I have no choice. I don't want to associate with your type. You're a poor loser. <laughs> well, Tara, I see you haven't changed a bit since middle school. Do you think you can act like an adult during the reunion, at least? Oh, why should I? Tara, you're 35 and acting like a teenager. Excuse me? 
Is that all you wanted? I'll see you at the reunion, Tara. Let's try and be civil to each other, okay? Bye for now. <sighs> you really don't get it, do you? We are not the same class of human, Cassie. As a person and as a woman, I am superior to you in every way. Get it? You're a loser, Cassie, a loser. You may have duped the teachers and our classmates into thinking you were something special back in middle school, but this is real life now. I'll make sure you understand that the day of the reunion, so be prepared for that. <laughs> Are you serious? You actually came? Even after I went to the trouble of warning you. Oh, it must be nice to be so blissfully unaware of your stature in life. It's so pathetic, I actually feel bad for you. You seem like you need another lesson. So, I'll take this opportunity to show everyone here that I'm a winner and you're a loser. <laughs> oh, this is so much fun. Do you finally get it now? Your cute little act from middle school doesn't work in the real world. Go back to where you belong, factory girl. Sweaty and covered with grease. Tara, would you mind explaining why you just threw a glass of wine all over me? Do you have any idea how hard it's going to be to get this red wine out of my dress? I don't see why you're complaining. I went to the trouble of picking the perfect wine for you. The perfect wine for me? The bottle must have only cost $10. What difference does it make how much it cost? Ugh, oh, yes, you wouldn't know the value of a fine wine, would you? When you drink fine wine regularly like me, you develop a more mm, refined taste. I tasted a bit of the wine I threw at you beforehand, and I knew right away that it was the kind of wine sold cheap by the gallon at every supermarket in town. Like I said, it was perfect for an uncultured woman like you. I'm sorry. I must have missed the sorry somewhere in there. Oh, don't cry over cheap spilled wine, Cassie. If it worries you, I can always buy you another bottle. <laughs> That was a vintage wine that the reunion organizing committee paid for out of their own pockets. What? Now go and apologize to them. Do you know how much one glass of that normally cost? But in any case, let me ask you, why did you throw a cup of wine at me? Aren't you embarrassed to be acting so immature? Me? <laughs> You're the one acting immature. What are you talking about? I told you before. I'm married to the CEO of Wagner Industries, a client of your employer, Bridgewell Fabrication. I am aware. So what? So? So you need to know your place. You're nothing but a laborer for a subcontractor. Wait, subcontractor? Class reunions are for those who have actually made something of themselves, not for manual laborers working for chicken feed. Do you have any sense of shame at all? Everyone staring at you right now can see you for what you are, and you don't even realize it. How immature can you be? Do you even know what that word means? I'm pretty sure they're looking at you because you randomly decided to throw a glass of wine at me. In any case, this is a class reunion, not a poorhouse. Go home! Hmm... Well, I suppose I am now covered in red wine, so I'll step out for a moment. But it's odd that you'd be so confident in your position as the wife of a CEO. It makes me think you're not aware of just what sort of position your husband's company is in. Oh, you're pathetic. You really don't know what you've lost, do you? Just go home to your subsidized apartment. You've already done enough to ruin the evening. I'll let you in on some important information. Oh, uh, what information could you possibly offer me? How to apply for an EBT card? You seem to be under the impression that Bridgewell Fabrication is a subcontractor, but you've got it completely backwards. Backward? We're the prime contractor. Wagner Industries is a subcontractor. <laughs> well, what do you mean? 
I mean, it's not like one of our companies is the boss of the other or anything. But man, executive wise are really all alike, aren't they? When will you start making sense? Your husband's company is going under. What? <laughs> what is the meaning of this? My husband's company is going bankrupt because of yours? How dare you do this to my husband's company? Were you just jealous of me living the life you could only dream of? But first, you need to explain one thing to me, Cassie. How did you become the CEO of Bridgewell Fabrication? So you talk to your husband then? Explain yourself! I'll go slowly, okay? First, your story about my company being the reason for Wagner Industries' bankruptcy? That's not entirely accurate. Not entirely accurate? We do have Wagner Industries make some of the parts in our products. But, and I take no joy in saying this, Wagner's product quality has dropped significantly ever since the new CEO took over. It did? It's dropped to the point that it's starting to affect our products, so we decided to cut off the contract after this year. After that, it was a domino effect of other companies reaching the same conclusion. And ever since the other day, news has started to go around that Wagner Industries is filing for bankruptcy. Well, that's impossible. It's not just possible, it's the plain and simple truth. I did what I needed to do to protect the quality of my own company's products. It's nothing personal, just business. But then, wait, how did you become the CEO? You must have played some dirty trick to rise up the ranks that far. Nope, no tricks. It's a really simple story, actually. Bridgewell Fabrication was founded by my grandfather. I'm the third generation CEO. It's your family's company. I was intending to take over the company, so I studied. And I've been working hard at expanding the business ever since I became CEO two years ago. Well, that's... Well, I think that should answer all your questions. Can I go now? Uh, wait, um, could you hire my husband at your company? You want me to hire your husband? My husband has, well, earned the ire of his family for running his father's business into the ground. They said they won't contribute a cent towards the debt that he's incurred. So, you want me to give him a job? I'm not asking for much. He's got plenty of experience at the corporate level. He'd make an excellent member of the board of directors. No thanks. Why not? There are no open board seats at the moment, and even if they were, I'm not very interested in hiring someone who has consistently looked down on me for being a woman CEO. I'm not going to hire someone who'd cause me nothing but trouble. Oh, but you have to! If my husband doesn't find work soon, I'm going to have to find a job. Ah, so you just wanted me to finance your preferred lifestyle. Well, I can't work. I've never had a job before. That does not surprise me at all. What's that supposed to mean? I'm done explaining things to you. I've had enough for this evening. Think about it yourself. Bye. <laughs> My husband is suing me. Huh? I thought I could escape his debt by divorcing him. But he found out about my boyfriend, and now he's suing me for infidelity. Boyfriend? You were cheating on him? My husband is so straight-laced, I needed some excitement. What else was I supposed to do, be in a boring marriage? How could he sue me for this? I'm not touching that one. Why are you being so cold to me? I'm sick and tired of explaining everything to you. But I need someone to talk to! I'm blocking you. Wait, don't! Bye bye <laughs> Tara tried to avoid dealing with crushing debt by divorcing her husband. But in an unexpected twist, her affair got uncovered. So now she wanted to debt herself to pay the damages to her ex-husband. Plus, their savings account was drained, so she didn't get a cent out of the divorce. As if that wasn't enough trouble for her, 
It turns out she still hadn't paid off some debts from when she was single. She's now up to her eyeballs in six-figure debt. She isn't on good terms with her own family, so she's finally getting a job, which is probably for the best. It seems like she's having a hard time giving up her pampered lifestyle, though, so it's no surprise that her spending habits are hampering her from being able to work her way out of debt. Hey, idiot! Did you get the wedding invitation? What? Oh, it's you, Mike. I may not have went to college, but that doesn't make me an idiot. Yes, it does. That's why I'm calling you an idiot. <laughs> Did you forget my name or something? Huh? You went to a pretty good university in the capital, but you can't even remember the names of your high school classmates? It's Jason, right? Oh, you did remember. Shut up! And to think I went out of my way to contact you. Oh, the wedding invitation, right? It arrived today. Okay. Reply saying you're coming. What? Why? It's my wedding. The only person from our grade to go to a university in the capital? Coming to the wedding and paying respect is your highest priority. What do you mean, pay respect? <laughs> Are you unhappy with something? Your grammar. What? Anyways, I need some time to decide whether I'll go or not. The mail only just arrived, and I haven't even opened it yet. I'll take a look at the time and place now. What? You haven't looked at it yet. <laughs> I still think you would put off such an important thing. You really are an idiot. Yeah, yeah, I'll reply in a few days. Bye then. Come or else! Hey, Jason. Thanks for saying you'll come. <laughs> oh, you got my reply. I'm looking forward to it. Yep, I've got a fun surprise prepared. Hi, Mike. Sorry while you're busy, but I have something urgent. Oh, hi, Jason. I'm the groom of today's wedding, so I'm pretty busy right now. I know. It's about the wedding. What? I'm at the entrance to the wedding venue. They're telling me they didn't prepare a seat for me since I replied saying I wouldn't come. What? What? You actually came? Huh? But I'm the one hosting today's wedding, uh, the person who graduated an elite university. Yeah, I did tell you to come, but is the not coming the manner of correct decision? That's why I didn't prepare a seat for you. Oh, what a mess. Why, you... You were planning on this from the start, weren't you? Hey, doubting others like that is also a sign of uneducatedness, you know? Mike, why do you do this to me? Huh? If you don't like me so much, then just leave me alone. Why do you put so much effort in making me look like a fool? Isn't it obvious? I do this precisely because I don't like you. Huh? You didn't even go to college but still had a good grades in high school. You even beat me in the student election. Not only that, you even stole the girl I liked. If you're talking about the girl from the class next to us, then I refused her approach it since I already had a girlfriend from another school. That annoyed me too! What? You're just jealous. But today, I'm getting married before you do. And my wife's a daughter of the CEO of the largest company in this area. She graduated an elite university as well. Not as good as mine, though. Jealous, huh? <laughs> I don't get it. I bet you don't. An uneducated idiot like you has no right to celebrate my wedding. Just go home already. <laughs> you're lucky you're able to get off with just being embarrassed at the entrance. <laughs> So, does that mean people with a worse academic background than you can't come to the wedding? Yes. Just go home already. I understand. We'll all just go home. What? All? Hey, idiot! Jason! What did you tell our former classmates? I didn't do anything. I only told them that I was going home because you told me I couldn't come, since my academic background was lower than yours. Then why did everyone leave? The ceremony at the chapel just finished, but no one's here! I asked my cousin at the entrance what happened, but she said everyone just followed you and went home. You must have done something! Do you still not notice? Uh, notice what? 
all the people you invited to your wedding are people who didn't go to college. What? Did you forget that 90% of graduates from our school get a job rather than go to university? People like you are the minority. Not only that, but you refuse to have any relationships with any of the other students planning to go to university, since you only saw them as rivals. Why would I want to get along with my rivals? And so, for today's wedding, the only people you could invite were people you had some sort of relationship with, right? That means... What? It means that everyone who was invited to the wedding were people who didn't go to university. Um... You said I had no right to celebrate you because of my academic background. None of the others went to university either, so we all left. No, that's not what I meant! I only told you to go home! But your attitude against people with low academic backgrounds wasn't just towards me, right? That's how everyone else saw it, at least. No, no, I only meant for you! It looks like you've dug yourself a hole. Fine! I'll prepare a seat for you at the after party, so come back immediately! What? No. I'm already on the train home. What? The train? I can't speak for the others about what they're going to do. If you want them to come back, then you have to contact them yourself. But I'll look so pathetic! You take responsibility and do it for me! I said I'm in the train right now. Can't you use your phone? I don't want to get up and lose my seat. Bye. Apologize to me right now! What's this suddenly? It's your fault the wedding was cancelled! Even the marriage is gonna be broken off! Oh, I heard. The others told me. But why is it my fault? My bride and her relatives asked why all my classmates left. They thought I was some sort of asshole with no friends. And then someone who saw what happened explained it to them. I see. And so they found out how much of a scumbag you are? If you had just come back, this wouldn't have... It's your fault for being a jerk by telling me to come, but not preparing a seat. I wanted to prove to you that I found happiness before you did. Then why didn't you just not invite me in the first place? But since you did invite me, couldn't you have just prepared a seat for me and accepted my wedding gifts? The whole day would have been fine. I would probably have just ignored your insults, too. There's no point in talking about what could have happened. Just explain that everything's alright to my fiancé, will ya? What? She'll probably agree to cancel breaking off the marriage if you tell her that you forgive me. But I've never even met her. Then I'll come to your house right now and take you to her. I'm on the other side of the country, in A City. What? A City? I moved here due to work reasons. Why a city? I sent the invitation to your former address, which means that you should still be in... It was remailed to my new address. Didn't I write my new address in the reply I sent you? I didn't intend on letting you come, so I threw it away. Seriously? But still, a city? Did you get fired from your previous job and flee there or something? <laughs> what? No. I still work at the company I got into after graduating high school. I moved to A City since I was chosen to be one of the people to work at the new facilities here. Huh? Hold on. A new office in a city? Does that mean you work for B Corporations? Yes, and... I heard someone my age was chosen to be a branch manager. Yep, that's me. What is it to you? Why? Why are you getting a high-ranking position at the parent company of the place I work at? Oh, really? What's with that reaction? No, it's just that I just found out. Oh, sorry. I promised to go shopping with my wife. What? Your wife? You're already married? Yep. With my girlfriend from high school, just last year. You got married before me! Our marriage was done abroad with only family, so we just let everyone else know by mail. I didn't know your current address, so I sent it to your parents' house. Didn't you get it? This is my first time hearing this! I see. Well, that being said, I can't do anything for you. Not that I want to, anyways. Hey, wait! I'll block you now. Wait, you! Bye. <laughs> what happened to Mike after this was apparently quite tragic. Not only did all his savings go away since on top of paying for the wedding, he had to pay an alimony, but since his fiancée was the daughter of the CEO of the company he worked at, 
A lot of people from work were invited to the wedding. All of them found out about how Mike's classmates all went home since he insulted me for not going to college, leading to him being fired from work. His parents also shunned him, so he left the town he grew up in. Apparently, some of my classmates who haven't blocked him out of curiosity get texts from him complaining about this and that or asking for help. But apparently, he was scammed in the capital and is now in huge debt. Can we talk right now, Dad? Sure. What is it, Taylor? It's about next week's visit. I couldn't get any train tickets, so Jim's going to be driving me there instead. But what about your car sickness? You're just like me and how car sick you get. Jim says it'll be fine if I take car sickness pills and just sleep in the car. <laughs> I see. We'll need a place to park the car when we get there. Oh, that's right. I'll ask the neighbor if we can borrow the empty lot she owns. Thanks. I'll tell Jim. Yep. Say hi to him for me. Do you think I should get a driver's license already? Well, having one is certainly convenient. And I heard that even people who get car sick easily are fine if they're the ones who are driving. I've heard that too. Well, I guess I'll think about it later. I can't wait to visit you guys next week. Yep, we'll prepare some nice food for you. Taylor, it's Dad. Today's the day you'll be visiting, right? It's already one hour past the time you said you would arrive. Did something happen? <coughs> Taylor? Are you asleep in the car or something? Text back when you see this, alright? I'll try and call Jim. Hi, Jim. Can you talk now? Just send a reply if you notice my texts if you're driving, okay? Oh, hi, Mr. Larson. Is the driving all right? Oh, yeah. I'm not driving right now. Is something the matter? Taylor wouldn't reply to my texts, so I decided to text you instead. What? Taylor isn't there yet. She's not here. Do you have any clue as to what happened? No, I drove her to the station and then we parted. The station? But she told me she'd be coming by car. You were supposed to drive her here, right? Since she doesn't have her own driver's license? Oh, that's what this is about. Urgent business suddenly came up, so I had to use the car. I told her to just use the train. I'm sorry I didn't notice. I thought Taylor already told you. Oh, I understand. Well, tell me if you hear anything from her. I'll tell you if she texts me anything. All right, got it. Jim! I found out where Taylor is! She got into an accident at A-City and was brought to the hospital by ambulance! I'm going to head there right away. But why on earth was she in A-City? It's quite far from where you two live, and it's a hundred kilometers in the opposite direction of where we live! Anyways, my wife and I will be going to A-City immediately. Head over there once you see this message, alright? I'm fine, Dad. Taylor! You're heading over here, right? Yep. Your mother and I are in the train right now. But if you can text, that means you weren't badly injured, right? Yep, I'm fine. But I broke a bone in my foot, so I'll have to go to the hospital. But the driver who bumped into me took the proper actions. He was actually really kind, so don't shout at him, alright? Alright, I'm just glad you're okay. Texting is kind of difficult, so I'll go now. Taylor, there are a couple of things I want to ask you when I get there. I know. Be careful. Jim, you haven't been replying to my texts. What's the matter? Oh, hello, Mr. Larson. I'm sorry, I dropped my phone into some water, and so I took out the battery and let it dry. Did you hear anything from Taylor? You've got some nerve talking like that after what you did. Mr. Larson, why are you mad suddenly? You're cheating on my daughter with someone else right now, right? What? You pretended to have urgent business you suddenly needed to attend to, but you were actually planning on going on vacation with this other woman, right? Huh? 
What makes you think that? You knew that Taylor gets easily carsick, so you had her sleep as soon as she entered the car. You took advantage of this and drove all the way to A City, where you stranded her and picked up the woman you were cheating with. I see. So you know that much already, huh? I guess I screwed up. You admit to doing it? Well, I'm kind of forced to. Your daughter was kind of a bother, so I drove 100 kilometers to a city and threw her by the sidewalk. <laughs> you found out faster than I expected you would, but I already took her money and there's no way she's going to be walking home. <laughs> I won't forgive this! Calm down, old man! Hmm... Judging by your tone, I guess you haven't seen the text I sent you yesterday yet. Yesterday? I've already met up with Taylor. What? How? How'd you know where she was? I took all of her means of- Communication, right? What? No. It seems that we were really lucky. The phone you smashed was an old smartphone, with nothing on it. What? She got a new phone just the previous day, apparently. All the data was transferred to her new phone. So that's the phone I destroyed? Yup. Take a look at the texts I sent you yesterday. Then we'll talk. She got into an accident at the place I left her at, so that's why you found out so quickly. She's in the hospital right now. Damn it! I thought that I would be able to delay you finding out about it until at least we got back from vacation. So that's what bothers you, not your wife's injury. You're one rotten son of a bitch. It can't be helped. I just don't feel any love towards her anymore. That doesn't mean you can just abandon her in some random city. No human with any remorse would do such a thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Not going to argue, huh? You don't even know where I am right now, do you? <laughs> what if I said I did? What? You're at a resort a few kilometers from A City, right? How do you know? It looks like you didn't notice that there was a GPS hidden in the purse you stole from Taylor. A GPS? Our family has the habit of putting GPSs on important things when going traveling, in case they get stolen or lost. It looks like Taylor still does it to this day. Besides, the resort you're currently at is run by a relative of my wife's. Seriously? You went there for your college graduation trip, right? Don't you remember who organized that trip? Oh, it was Taylor, right? Correct. Jesus. Anyways, I'll be coming to your room. What? Your father will be coming too. My dad? I called him. What? You better get ready. Damn it! My dad now monitors everything I do because of what you did! Don't you think you deserve it? Shut up! You guys want an alimony, right? Fine, I'll give it to you. My girlfriend's dad is the CEO of a huge company, so I don't care. A few thousand dollars is nothing to him. You met this other woman, Alice, at college, right? Yeah, she's a daughter of a CEO. Apparently, that's all a lie. What? A lie? Taylor knew this Alice, but apparently, she was infamous among the other girls for telling all sorts of lies so guys would like her. What? But uh, she always has a ton of money with her. It makes sense, considering the job she has now. What job? It's the kind of job you wouldn't want to go around telling other people about. You know what I mean? She was forced to start it since she had a ton of debt. What debt? Which means you'll have to pay for the alimony we'll be asking of you by yourself. Wait a minute, I don't have that much money. Does that mean you spent all your money on this expensive vacation of yours? Um, please forgive me! I'm not the one you should be apologizing to. But Taylor doesn't seem to want to forgive you either, so it doesn't really matter. Our um... Our lawyer will be contacting you. Uh, Mr. Larson? Goodbye, you piece of shit. <laughs> the person Jim was cheating on Taylor with, who came up with the idea to bring Taylor all the way to A City. Apparently, she sees Taylor as her rival which is what made her decide to try and steal Jim and abandon Taylor in some distant city. Obviously, we asked for quite a large alimony from the two. It seems Alice was shocked when she found out that this little prank of hers she pulled without any thinking caused quite a mess. 
she accepted the alimony and the ban on approaching Taylor without arguing, and is now extremely busy with the extra work she's taken on. Jim, on the other hand, was thrown into work at a company an acquaintance of his father runs, and on top of that, has multiple part-time jobs. He's now being monitored 24-7, and is constantly working to pay off the debt. Hey, Anna! Your business trip is until the day after tomorrow, right? Yup. Can I enter your room with a spare key tomorrow? What? Why? I think I forgot something there the last time I visited. I thought I should ask you for my permission, even if you are my fiancé. Can I go in and find out? Can't you wait until I get home? I see. I want to use it tomorrow! That's a point of conversation, you know? I see. Then I guess it can't be helped. I understand, but don't touch the drawer with my dresses, alright? Okay, uh, the one with the dresses your late mother gave you, right? Well, I've never touched that drawer, so there's no way what I'm looking for is there. <laughs> I guess so. Sorry, I have to do this while you're away. I'll take care not to make a mess. Okay, thanks. Um, Nick? There's something I want to ask you. What is it? Sorry if it sounds like I'm doubting you, but... Do you know anything about what happened to the drawer with my dresses? Why? One of the dresses is gone. What? It disappeared at the same time the lock broke. Maybe you're just imagining things. They're a lot, right? And you don't even wear them often. I take them out every once in a while for maintenance. So I know the pattern of every dress, and I'd notice immediately if one of them disappeared. Oh, really? Do you know anything? Well, not really. I never touched that drawer. I see. Then I better call the police since it might be a burglary. The police? I'm going to check the video on the intercom system later as well. Video? Yep. It's a new model that starts recording whenever it detects someone unusual. Is that going too far? You've got plenty of dresses, right? Losing one should be fine. That dress is irreplaceable! It was given to me by my mother, which is why I checked the intercom system as soon as I noticed it was gone! What? Give me my mother's dress back! Well, um... Now! Shit. Fine. I'll tell you what you want to know. I'm the one who took the dress. Lauren's the one who has it. What? Who's Lauren? My ex-girlfriend. I lent her the dress. Why? She said she needed a dress, so... That's not what I meant. Why are you still in contact with your ex-girlfriend? And why would you just give her my dress? She should buy her own if she needs one that badly. Besides, you knew those were my mother's dresses. They're one of my only things I have left of her. You should know that they're important to me. Well, um, she'll probably give it back sooner or later. I'm telling you to give it back right now. Call this Lauren immediately. Just give up already. What? Are you telling me to just give up the dress? I mean, she's probably cut the dress by now. She what? Do you know that dresses like that look better if you're shorter? Lauren's 152 centimeters tall, so she had to cut it so it would fit her. Huh? She'll ruin the dress if she cuts it. Lauren's good with her hands, so she should be able to do it. <laughs> you're 170 centimeters tall, right? You won't be able to wear it anymore, so just give it to her. <laughs> it's not gonna fit even if she gives it back. That's not the problem. I'm telling you that's my mother's dress. I'm not even that tall. She's only two centimeters shorter than me, so there's no reason for her to cut the dress. What? Cutting someone else's dress is wrong in the first place. Just what are you thinking? Well, if that's the case, Lauren can have the dress, right? Huh? Are you being serious? But it can't be helped, right? She's already cut it. Fine, then pay me $105,000.
What? $105,000? What joke is this? It doesn't matter how mad you are. That amount is just... <laughs> what? My mother's dresses mostly cost around $700 to $2,000. But the dress you stole was made by a famous fashion designer. So it's way more expensive than the others. Oh. <laughs> Taking any of the dresses would have been bad enough. But to think you took the one that cost $105,000. What? This is a joke, right? You just try to scare me, right? Oh, I get it. This is one of those pranks. I wish it was a joke. I've told you this over and over, but that dress was given to me by my mother. There's no way I would be able to joke about it. So that means that... Just contact this Lauren for me, will you? I'm not just going to ignore this. Long time no see, Anna. Is now a good time? What? Is this Maria? We haven't talked since the high school reunion, right? What's wrong? You see, my sister has one of the dresses your mother gave you. What? You know, when your mother showed me her collection when I told her I was interested in making dresses? My sister has the one she said was made by a famous fashion designer right now. Are you sure? I compared it with the picture I took that time, so I'm pretty sure. My sister says an acquaintance of hers gave it to her, but this dress is a remembrance from your mother, right? I thought there was no way you'd just give it to someone. Is your sister named Lauren? Uh, yeah. You've met my sister before? No. I'll explain it to you later. But for now, can you tell me in what state the dress is in? It looks fine on me. What about the skirt length? Does it look like it was cut or anything? What? The skirt length? I'll check right now. Hold on. I'm back. I spread the dress out and looked at it carefully, but it seems fine. Really? I asked my sister as well, and she says she hasn't made any modifications. Thank God. My sister says a strange customer forced her to take it. What? A customer? You see, my sister works as a prostitute under the alias Silva. One of the customers saw her driver's license and found out her real name. Apparently, this customer suddenly gave her a dress out of nowhere. My sister got scared and told me about it when she took it home and examined it, since it looked really expensive. And that's when you noticed it was my mother's dress? Yep. My sister says she wants to give it back as soon as she finds out who the owner is. It's fine if she returns it to you, right? You should probably come over and take a look at it, just in case. Of course. I'll go there right now. That's probably a good idea. There's something I want to ask your sister as well. Hey, Anna! What do you mean the wedding's canceled? And what's this about alimony? What are you thinking? I'm the one who should be asking that question. Huh? I met with Lauren. What? Why? It was a coincidence, but it seems that Lauren was my friend's sister. Uh... You understand why I'm canceling the marriage and suing you if I tell you that I heard everything from her, right? Well, um... Lauren isn't even your ex-girlfriend. She's just a prostitute you paid for. And apparently you're asking her to go out with you, even though we're engaged? No, that's not a... I was just trying to please her, you know? By sacrificing my mother's dress. What do you mean, sacrificing? You're being too dramatic. Besides, it's not even the kind of dress she wanted. Ah, uh, what are you talking about? She wanted a dress to wear at ceremonies, not a dress for parties. What? Really? I thought all dresses were the same. Which is why you were able to just take my mother's dress that cost $105,000. Well, um, I don't have $105,000. Thankfully, the dress was intact. What? 
Lauren has some knowledge about dresses thanks to her sister who's a designer. Which is why she noticed that the dress you gave her was expensive and not the type she wanted. What, so the dress was fine? Then isn't that no need to cancel the marriage? You were just threatening me. What are you talking about? Of course I'm canceling the marriage. What, why? For touching the drawer I specifically told you not to touch. And for approaching another woman while you were engaged to me. I think there's plenty of reason for me to cancel the marriage, no? Uh... That's not it. You borrowed $20,000 from my grandmother as money for the wedding, right? Huh? This was around the same time you gave Lauren some expensive wine for her birthday, right? This can't be a coincidence. No, I... Uh, did I really borrow that much? Stop trying to bluff. My grandmother does have Alzheimer's, but her condition is not that serious, and there's a video of you asking for money. What, a video? I set up a camera so I can check on her. You were recorded clearly on camera, and there's even audio. You won't be able to get off of this. Really? Damn. That being said, the marriage is canceled. Hold on, the wedding's only a month away. You can't. Take care of the cancellation fees, okay? Huh? You'll probably have to pay 50% if it's only a month away. About $12,000, right? I said wait! I don't have any more money! I use it at the brothel! Do you want me to call the police and report your theft? The police? Well then, a lawyer will take care of things from now. I'm going to block you now. Apparently, Nick came to my apartment the next day, but I had already canceled the contract and went to my parents' house. He didn't know and tried to get in with the spare key, but couldn't, so he kept pounding on the door, it seems. He was reported by the neighbors and was arrested. The company he works at found out about this, and soon everyone also found out about why the wedding was canceled. Nick couldn't bear everyone judging him, so he quit. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to sue him. Apparently his parents are going to pay for it for now, but we'll get the money from him later. He now works several part-time jobs and works day to night with no time to rest. Hey, Alicia, do you think leaving your husband on his own to take care of your daughter is okay? What? I'm saying that you need to do something about how you're always with Angela ever since she was hospitalized. Don't be ridiculous. It's my job as a parent to support her while she's fighting this illness. You need to take care of things on your own until Angela gets better. What? Do you know who you're talking to? I'm the one supporting this family. You're just a lazy good for nothing that used Angela's illness as an excuse to quit her job. What? Just let the doctors take care of her illness. I'm the one paying for her medical bills anyways. You should be grateful and prioritize taking care of me. I only quit my job because I couldn't take care of Angela while working at the same time. See? You're being rebellious again. Yep, that settles it. What do you mean? I'll give you the divorce papers, so just leave already. Divorce papers? I'm going to marry Jennifer. She took care of the house while you weren't there to do so. What? Jennifer, my sister. Yep. She took care of me with her body while I was lonely. What? There's no way I could have resisted. <laughs> Putting your hands on your wife's sister is one thing. But to think that you would fall for Jennifer's tricks? Say whatever you want. It's your fault for failing to take care of me. I'll give you just enough money to not become homeless. But I'm not paying an alimony, alright? Arnold! Bye! Hi, Alicia! It's been 11 years, right? To think that you would still have feelings for me. <laughs> I guess it can't be helped. What? Arnold, 
You haven't contacted me ever since you divorced me from my sister, 11 years ago. What do you want? I returned to my parents' house. What? I'm trying to return, to be exact, but I saw you and what seems to be Angela entering the house. Why do you want to return after all these years? I thought it was time for me to inherit the family business, considering my dad's age. It's the perfect timing as well, since me and Jennifer just had a son, which is why me and my son, who's going to inherit the business after me, are returning for the first time in 11 years. Uh, return? I heard that the family business already closed. What? Your father was too old to work anymore, and no one was there to inherit the business, so... But that's why I'm returning! You need at least 10 years of experience to become a professional, it seems. But because you just disappeared with my sister 11 years ago, your father had no choice but to close the business considering his age and condition. What? But I came back! There's no point in telling that to me. Oh, I remember. I almost forgot why I contacted you in the first place. What is it? Leave my parents' house. Huh? You're not even related to me anymore. Why have you been staying at my parents' house for 11 years? Leave! I have a son now, so I don't need you and that weak daughter of yours anymore. <laughs> Jennifer, my son, and I are going to be living in that house from now on. You're not invited. Don't tell me you've already prepared to move here. Yep, I can move anytime. <laughs> That's fine. Just don't regret it, okay? Why would I? <laughs> of this hmm why is my uncle's family living here this is my parents house it's simple it's your uncle's family's house now what why what about my mom and dad they moved to the countryside after they closed the family business they moved and your uncle, who used to always change jobs, was finally able to settle down at a company in his hometown. He was looking for a house, so it was the perfect timing. I didn't hear anything about this! What are you talking about? Didn't you disappear with my sister 11 years ago and cut all contact with us? I'm their only child! It's not like I blocked their accounts, so they could have at least told me where they moved. It probably means that they disowned you. But I have a healthy son now, not a sick daughter like Angela. If I call them now... Your parents don't care about the gender, and Angela's fine now. What? It took one year for her to fully heal, but she's fine now. She's now a part of the volleyball team at her high school. Oh... Wait, then why were you at my parents' house? I'm pretty sure I saw you and Angela entering. When was this? I think it was during the three-day holiday last month. Oh, that must be when I visited for the sleepover we have a few times a year. Sleepover? I got a new job once Angela fully healed at your uncle's company. What? We already knew each other, and he treated me like family. I got along with his wife in particular since we shared hobbies. She let us stay at her house so we could work on a project together. That's probably where you saw me. Are you serious? Then where should I go to? I probably shouldn't be asking you this, but couldn't you have gone to my parents' house instead? What? That's impossible! Me and Jennifer just suddenly disappeared. There's no way we could just go back. But didn't you go back to your parents' house? It didn't end well, though. I only thought I could return because me and Jennifer had a son who could inherit the family business. It didn't matter, though, did it? Shut up! Jennifer said going to her parents was impossible, so... Is Jennifer with you right now? 
What? No. She's at a friend's house with our son. Apparently, Jennifer comes to our parents' house frequently. What? You probably know how I'm distant with my parents, who always favor Jennifer over me. But according to a friend who lives near my parents, Jennifer suddenly reappeared three years after we divorced. She's been visiting frequently ever since. These past few months, she's been visiting with what seems to be her son and husband. What? Since it's my parents, they probably welcomed her back as soon as she returned. I thought this husband was you, but apparently it wasn't. No, it wasn't. What's the meaning of this? Answer me! I only heard about this from my friend. Isn't it best if you find out on your own? It wasn't my son? Hmm? The baby Jennifer gave birth to. It wasn't my son! Oh, that's what you're talking about. Jennifer was cheating on me with another guy! She and this guy visited her parents, and she told her parents that he was her husband, and they just accepted it! She said she already submitted our divorce papers half a year ago, so they threw me out as soon as I knocked the door! But weren't you living with Jennifer even after she submitted the divorce papers? Maybe she just turned it in without telling you? No, I gave her filled out divorce papers after we had a huge fight! She probably used that! Oh... What should I do? Can I just block you now? What?! I hadn't blocked you until now since you were Angela's father, even if you had divorced me. But you contact me for the first time in 11 years only to talk about this. But- What I'm saying is, don't contact me or Angela anymore. Uh, maybe we could go back to how things used to be? Huh? There's no way I'm doing that. Alicia! Don't contact me ever again! I finally blocked Arnold after 11 years. What happened to him after that, I only heard from others. Apparently, he did a DNA test to see if he actually wasn't related to his son, and sure enough, he wasn't. He got revenge by suing Jennifer and this other guy and forcing them to be in debt. But in turn, he was sued by multiple female employees at his workplace for sexual harassment. Not only did the money he got from Jennifer disappear because of this, but he was even forced to take out a loan. In the end, he was taken away by some shady organization. What happened after that? I honestly don't care. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.